All right, Shalom, Israel, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachaha, Kudash. All right, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Next, double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that rule very well and teach very well and oversee the tabernacle of David. Quick shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp, the Achazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina. And finally, shout out to you, Akim and Akwath, which is also Hebrew for you brothers and sisters who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling towards your salvation. All right, to y'all, I say shalom. This is the Ach Alaya, the brother Elijah. And I'm here with a quick exhortation to you, Akim and Akwath out there. Of the hopefully let for your edification, right? So without too much else to say, we're just gonna hop right into the scriptures and Lord willing, Abaratiza, this is edifying unto you listeners. Alright, so this is the book of First Corinthians, chapter six, and we're really gonna start at verse ten. Alright, hold on. Alright. And it reads Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit. The kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And actually, we're actually going to start at verse 9. All right. So like you, excuse me. First Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai? And then I'll pause right here really quickly to, uh, to edify on this question. Because it's a, it's a beautiful question that apparently, you know, we all need to be reminded of once again. And I say we all because, you know, none of us. You know, can say that we don't still go off. None of us can say that we still don't sin. You know, even though we understand that it's not our desire, even as the Apostle Paul said in another place beautifully, you know, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You know, we have to um, daily pray to Yahweh Shem Shai and ask him to take not his Holy Spirit from us, man, to continue to strengthen us in this in this journey, man, in this walk, you know, through the straight gate. You know, and the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai is going to hearken unto the prayer of those who are sincere, those who truly desire to seek him 10 times more and those who truly desire to even see his kingdom that, that he, he has promised us, man, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Right. Which is where we're going to perform all the works of the law, man. It says first Corinthians six and nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh Shem Shai. So you're not going to make it into this kingdom. By willfully sinning, man. You're not going to make it into this king kingdom by forwarding your iniquities, you know, by not acknowledging Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, especially the Lord Yahweh Shai in these times, man. Because we understand that's the only way in which the elect are going to be received back to the Heavenly Father in good graces. We understand it's through the Lord Yahweh Shai himself, which is the embodiment of righteousness, you know. Anyone who, who and we're going to get some examples. Any anyone who is still out here, you know, um, pleasing their flesh, serving their flesh, not acknowledge, not acknowledging, you know, the spiritual ordinances in which we've been uh, commanded to, to acknowledge the law, statutes and commandments. You are not going to inherit the kingdom of the heavenly father. And also you will be destroyed here in Babylon, the great, a.k.a. America, you know, and, and, and wherever you are scattered out in, in the rest of the world as well. Don't think that you're not going to. Go unnoticed, man. You know, the lawyer has judgment set up for all those who hate him. You know, whether you believe it or not. It says, be not deceived. Don't be tricked. Don't allow these, these camp leaders to, to persuade and to influence you into thinking that wisdom is for cowards. You know, don't don't allow them to, to push their own wickedness upon you. Like, like majority of our people are doing here today. You know, especially, and you know, and I mentioned the truth first, because we understand the Lord's judgment is going to start with those who know right from wrong. But the truth also trickles, I mean, these judgments also trickle down and affect those of our people who are caught up in these other religions as well. Especially Christianity, which is one of the most <laughs> basest religions out there. You literally have to not give a fuck about life itself in order to believe in Christianity, because it, it literally contradicts life. You know, the understandings and things that they teach, it goes literally against nature. You know, they even have uh, Transformers uh, preaching in the church, man. 
you know, Decepticons. And if y'all don't know what I'm referring to, I'm referring to the people who identify as one thing one day and another thing the next day. That's a transformer, man. You know, as the scripture even says, be not deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters, right? Even going into, you know, spiritual fornication and worshiping idols, you know, and as it said, fornication itself literally too. You know, understanding, as it says over here to the right, you can read it in the NIV. It says, uh, do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, right? Which is what I was alluding to with the transformer community, the alphabet community, Skittles community. Y'all catch my drift. The Sod Sodomite community, you know, the Lord said, be not deceived, neither fornicators. So no, you can't be a Sodomite, you know, no idolaters. No, you can't acknowledge Jesus Christ. And other ideologies and other false gods, Islam and Buddhism and um, atheism, even scientism, you know, MOTBisms, you know, it says no idolaters. We understand that even receiving the MOTB, the mark of the beast, which is the R to the F to the I to the DC hip, we understand that if you receive that, you are an idolater. That is you. So, like, excuse me, when you receive that in your right hand or in your forehead, we understand that that is you acknowledging. Esau and Edom as your God. You're putting his ways before the Heavenly Father's ways. And if you be of the nation of Israel, we understand that our God has commanded us to have none other God besides him. You know, it says no adulterers, right? You uh, sleeping with other men's wives, you know, and, and, and you women going out of our own people and, and being whores, you know, all this, all the Lord has commanded us not to take part in these things, man. It says, nor ad adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. So like I said, you know, as it says over here, uh, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men. You know, and that goes for both sides, men with men and women with women. You know, the Lord is not dealing with any of these acts. You know, it even continues on in verse 10, 1 Corinthians 6 and 10 nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Let's read it over here in the NIV. Nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Verse 11. And such, and such were some of you. Right. Because we understand that before the Holy Spirit entered into us and revived us and gave us remembrance of the ways of our God, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, even acknowledging the Lord, Yahweh Shai himself, you know, and his great sacrifice uh, of mercy that Yahweh uh, allowed him to do for us, you know, to, to cover us, chiefly the elect, you know, to be pardoned and to be received and sanctified as, as the scripture goes on and says, uh, verse 11. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, and by the spirit of our, our God, Yahweh, right? Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. And what washed us, man? Truly, like I said, the remembrance of the Heavenly Father's ways through these scriptures. We understand the Lord, Yahweh Shai, even said, now are ye clean through the words which ye have. Matter of fact, let's get it, right? All right. John 15 and three. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So it's, it's through the word, man. You know, through these scriptures, through the remembrance of the ways of righteousness, the Lord has now cleansed us. And it begins with our mind. You know, it, it, it begins in the, in, in the spirit, man. You know, when the Lord sends that Rakhakwadash, right? That Holy Spirit sends uh, to sup with you. And to feed you with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of, of the scriptures, man. That's what cleanses us. The acknowledging of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, and his sacrifice even. It says, but ye are washed. Not all of us, not all of the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, so-called. Not all of the Israelites are being washed right now. You know, you have a lot of Israelites uh, doing the same things their fathers did, which is resist the Holy Spirit, you know. Which means you hear these scriptures, you hear uh, the remembrance of the law, such as the commandments. You hear the names Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, and you forsake them. You cast them behind you as if they're little worth 
or to be nothing regarded. And the Lord said, look, all of y'all. And he, he called you out by name. He acknowledged what you're doing, your works, the things that you prefer to do besides acknowledging him. He said, y'all will not inherit his kingdom. Y'all will be destroyed on this side. Most of us, uh, of the nation of Israel, pursuing the book of Zechariah chapter 13, uh, most of us, uh, two thirds even, are going to be purged out and destroyed here in Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, because of, of your wickedness, man. Once again, because of the fact that you hate the Heavenly Father, you know, uh, that was Zechariah 13 and verse 8 and 9. For those of y'all who want to go read it and be edified, man, the scriptures have, have promised two thirds of his own people have to die here because y'all love the ways of America. And, and you're going to take that mark, that haragma, right? They are going to get stuck with that palisade and you're going to be. You're going to have that R to the F to the I to the D C hip injected inside of you, you know, and y'all are going to be destroyed. But once again, I want to read verse 11 and we'll continue on. First Corinthians 6 and 11. And such were some of you. So, yes, it's not impossible for the Lord to uh, revive his people. It's not impossible for those who have once sinned and, and you know, didn't acknowledge the Lord for them to return back and acknowledge him. You know, and we understand truly those who are going to return back to him now are those who were uh, seeking, seeking for the Lord back then in the old world, man. You know, we understand that the even the spirit of the prophets being subject to the prophets, we understand that none of the prophets are, are going to be sifted out, man. You know, they are a part of the elect and the Lord promised them mercy and deliverance through the Lord Yahweh Shai. And such were some of you. Right. We used to some of us used to steal things, you know. Some of us used to, you know, uh, w once again, like I said, partake in, in the ways of this world, man. Whatever it may be, some of us may have committed adultery, even knowingly or unknowingly. Guess what? The Lord is still acknowledging that, you know, just because you don't acknowledge your transgression doesn't mean the Lord, the Lord isn't acknowledging it, you know. And that's why, once again, it's beautiful that we have these scriptures to not only call us out on our bullshit, call us out when we fall short. You know, but we also get the remembrance of mercy. You know, we get the the remembrance of how how much riches the heavenly Father has in regards to His grace, and how they're they're new every morning. You know, even for His elect's sake. You know, the scriptures talk about the Lord being uh, patient, long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Man. You know, and we understand it. That's really only the elect because <laughs> majority of the Israelites don't want to serve our God, man. Even from the old worlds, they didn't. And that's why they have to be destroyed here now. It says, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. For those of you who can receive it, who this world ignorantly calls Jesus, we know his true name in the Hebrew tongue is Yahweh Shai, right? Which means he is salvation or he is redeemer you know because that's exactly what he has become that's exactly what he was made for made to be for the nation of israel you know it says and it says but ye are justified in the name of the lord yahweh shai and by the spirit of our god yahweh referring to that righteous spirit man yahweh bashim yahweh shai the elect are going to call upon that name and they're going to receive their salvation and their deliverance man Let's get Wisdom of Solomon real quick. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12. Let's grab verse 22. It says, Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, because the Lord does chasten us. We understand um, the word chasten going into correction, rebuke even. You know, we understand the Lord does chasten us. If he doesn't chasten you, it's because you are not of his children. You know, matter of fact, let's get that. Uh, let me see. I'm going to type this in else. Uh, maybe, did I spell bastard right? <laughs> let me just do this. So lock him, y'all. Oh, 144. <laughs> Call out y'all, watch him, y'all shot. Uh, Okay, yeah, here we go. Hebrews 12 and 8. 
But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, right? Because we understand truly all of the nation of Israel are partaking in the Lord's chastisement. Some of us are going to be chastised where we understand why we're getting chastised and rebuked. And we're going to return to the Lord and repent. You know, we're going to acknowledge him, call upon his name, even through the name of his son and be redeemed and be saved. You know, it says, wherefore, all are partakers. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Because we know that the Lord chastises all of his children. Pursuant to even the book of Amos, you know, the Lord tells us. Matter of fact, let me grab that as well. We're going to come back to wisdom of Solomon. All right. We understand that the Lord is chastising us. He knows exactly what we've been doing. And therefore, he's punishing us. Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, not for us. If we were performing the laws and acknowledging the Lord, then he would speak for us. But because we are disobeying him, he has spoken a word against us. O children of Israel, us Israelites, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, those who have entered into a covenant with the Lord, even by sacrifice, you know, it says against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. So everybody else, they're bastards. They are fatherless because the heavenly father is our father, right? It says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, because he's our father, I will punish you for all your iniquities. You've been disobeying me, so I have to correct you. That's what the Lord is telling us. And we know that it's only to his children, the Israelites. Everyone else are bastards. They're not his children. So why would he, why would he re chasten them? You know? Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 22. Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, thou scourgest our enemies, the other heathen, you other nations, even chiefly you, you Edomites, which is the biblical name and nationality for you so-called white men, women, and children. It says, thou scourges our enemies a thousand times more. So look, we, even though you have some of our people who don't even acknowledge the fact that they're getting chastised by the Lord because he loves them, uh, they still going to, you know, be in the kingdom. They're going to get fucked up on this side first. Don't get me wrong. But still, the Lord chastened us so he can pour out his love upon us. But thou scourges our enemies a thousand times more, which means he doesn't show them the same mercy that he shows us. You know, it says to the intent. Why does he do it to the intent that when we judge, we should carefully think of thy goodness. And when we ourselves are judged, we should look for mercy. All right. The Lord has set it up like this because he wants to show us, you know, that truly without him, we are nothing, you know, but with him, you know, he, he shows mercy upon us and he even elevates us. You know, he gives us his fear. You know, he gives us the knowledge and the insight of his ways. And, 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 you know, he forms and fashions and molds and makes us into his likeness, you know, to be his sons, you know, to represent him in the earth. That has been set up only for the Israelites, you know, through the Lord Yahweh Shai being that chief example of his sons. The Lord Yahweh Shai has been elevated to, to a level in which none other Israelite will ever be able to say or ever be able to be. The Lord Yahweh Shah was the only begotten of the Heavenly Father Yahweh in regards to his ways and his righteousness. You know, he was the only Israelite to serve Yahweh. Yahweh. So, like, he was the only Israelite to serve the Heavenly Father Yahweh, meaning he is or he exists, you know, to serve him completely without going off, man. You know, when he came as that sacrificial lamb, even, he, he did everything perfectly. To be that unblemished lamb worthy to be slain for the sins of the people. Let me, let me get this, actually. All right. It says, Revelation 5 and 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And who is this lamb? You know, it's the Lord Yahweh Shai for those of y'all who can't receive it. He was slain, man. And through his sacrifice, through him being, you know, killed on that cross over 2,000 years ago, 
it was for the remission of sins, man. You know? For the nation of Israel. <gasps> Excuse me, Salakim. Right? Let's grab this too. Matthew 26 and 28. For this is my blood. Alright, uh, Salakim. I had a, a phone call, but hopping right back into the spirit. Uh, Matthew 26 and 28. The Lord Yahweh Shai said, this is the red letter. It says, for this is my blood of the New Testament, the new covenant, right? So yes, the Lord Yahweh Shai did die for the new covenant, for the new agreement, for the new contract. That cannot be refuted nor argued upon. It is going to be refuted and argued upon, but it's not going to change. The truth is still the truth. It says, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. For whose sins? The sins of them that were under the first testament. They had to be forgiven. They had to be pardoned. You know, so that way they can enter into this new covenant where in dwelleth righteousness, where none of them can sin anymore. That has been made manifest through the sacrifice of the Lord Yahweh Shai and his also resurrection. Three days later, for those of y'all who, who, who don't believe, man. Yes, his blood... You know, gave power for the New Testament yet, and still the Israelites have not entered into that covenant yet. You understand? We're, they're not going to pass under the rod of the covenant until the Lord Yahweh Shai returns back into the earth and gathers them together. You know? Let's jump on down. Um, here we go. This is, I think, I believe this might have been what I was looking for. Acts 2 and 38. It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you. What baptizes you? Through this word, man. We understand the scriptures are referred to as living waters. This word is what baptizes and cleanses us, man. You know, it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? Because we understand that John's baptism was of the water. You know, he gave us remembrance of the prophecies, gave us remembrance of the scriptures. But the Lord Yahweh Shah's baptism being the baptism by fire is the Holy Spirit coming upon us in the name of Yahweh Shai. For those of y'all who can receive it, you're going to be professing the name Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai if the Holy Spirit lives within you. Because it's a gift also. You got camps out here teaching against the name Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai saying we don't know the names. We can't call upon the names or names aren't important. You just got to keep the laws. Man, you have not the gift. The Lord has not given you that mercy to reveal his son to you, to have mercy upon you, to save and deliver you. You still are in that darkness. You know, you still are our subject. You, you have made yourself subject to the law of Moses and you will be judged by it. You know, all of those who have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Even the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and they're serving that name in, in uh, sincerity and truth, even uh, having their works to back up their faith. We understand that they're going to be the ones who are found in the Lord's grace and mercy. You know, let me get this real quick. All right. No, that's not what I want. Let me see. Flash. All right, here we go. Matthew 16 and 17. And Yahweh Shai answered him. Let's just get it real quick. And verse 16. Actually, verse 15 for the point. Uh, okay, yeah. We'll just start at verse 15. It says, uh, Matthew 16 and 15. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Right? So the Lord Yahweh Shai is asking Peter, who, who do you say that I am? And verse 16 says, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Hamashiach, the anointed one, the son of the living God, right? Uh, this isn't exactly what I was looking for, but it's still the point. It says, I, I was looking for the scripture where, the, where uh, Peter said that this was the lamb. Uh, but we'll just read this as well. It says, verse 17, And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven, right? So the Lord Yahweh Shai is a stumbling block, man. Everyone's not going to be able to understand the Lord Yahweh Shai and his sacrifice and, and, you know, his point of existence, the reason for his existence. 
you know, the world can't receive it because it's spiritually discerned. You understand the Heavenly Father has to reveal the Lord Yahweh unto you and his purpose. Uh, let me see. I know a ton of verses going to pop up, but I want to get the I want to get the Apostle Peter mentioning this because it's beautiful through the spirit, man. The Apostle Peter, you know, was David, you know, for those of y'all who can receive it. And yeah, here we go. John 1 and 36. Um, oh, it was John that said it. Okay, so it's a like it. I, I, I believe that Peter has said it as well. Uh, but we'll read this. This is just the point. Uh, John 1 and 36, it says, And looking upon Yahweh as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh. Right? Because that is the Lord Yahweh Shai. He, he is that Lamb that was slain, even from the foundation of the world, to be the remission of sins of the nation of Israel. For the nation of Israel, you know? All right. Let's, let's go back. We'll read Wisdom of Solomon one more time. And I got a couple more scriptures and we'll end it, man. All right. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 22 says, Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, thou scourges our enemies a thousand times more to the intent. Right. Also telling you, showing you that look, they don't even get mercy. You know, <laughs> only the Israelites get mercy to the intent that when we judge, we should carefully think of thy goodness, right? Putting ourselves in, in other people's shoes, so to speak, you know? Just like we would want to have mercy from the Lord when we judge each other, you know, we should think, you know, okay, if that was me, how would I want to be dealt with, okay? Mercifully, you know? That's why it says we should think, we should carefully think of thy goodness. Matter of fact, that reminds me of the other scripture. Um, Let me see, probably paraphrasing. Uh. Man, I know what I'm thinking about. I'm trying to get the words together really quick. Um, at the spirit of love, at the spirit of love, I'll grab it. Uh, uh, man, I know, I know what I'm trying to get, but I guess the spirit wants me to stay here. All right, so it says, A wisdom of Solomon 22, Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, thou scourges our enemies a thousand times more to the intent that when we judge, we should carefully think of thy goodness. And when we ourselves are judged, we should look for mercy. And that's, once again, as you see by the title of this video, we look for mercy, man. And these great times of judgment that are quickly, quickly, quickly approaching, you know, for those of y'all who, you know, have the Holy Spirit to see and discern the times, man. We know that Esau Edom is about to come down with that hammer, man. As scriptures have called him the great hammer of the earth. We know Esau Edom is about to come out with that that new hammer, that 2023 hammer, man. You know, and, and a part of that hammer is going to be the enforcement even. You know, because we've seen here recently, Elon Musk has been given, you know, a green light from the FDA to start human trials as far as the neural lace, the neural link. The, that, that's the brain see hip as the scripture of Revelation 13 goes into and says, he shall cause all both small and great, rich and poor, and free and bond to receive that haragma. In their right hand or in their forehead, that forehead going into that neural lace, the neural link. He's already, Elon Musk has already been given the green light to start human trials. So who knows how much longer we have today bring it out on the masses, you know? And and ultimately, we look for mercy, man. We trust in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We're repenting. We're acknowledging the fact that we still go off daily. We're acknowledging the fact that we still do the things that the Lord doesn't take pleasure in. And, and, and we acknowledge the fact that we are seeking him 10 times more, that we are being sincere in regards to acknowledging the son. You know, this is Romans chapter three. We're going to start at verse 21. It says, but now the righteousness of Yahweh, for those of you who don't believe, we're going to keep saying them names, man. But now the righteousness of Yahweh, without the law is manifested. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now, don't get caught up on this, man. We understand that a lot of y'all wrestle with the Apostle Paul's words. You know, it says, but the right, but now the righteousness of the Most High without the law is manifested. What is this talking about? It's not saying we can serve the Lord without the law. That's not what it's saying. What it's saying is we are no longer debtors to the law. We understand that through the Lord Yahweh Shai, we have been covered. Because he fulfilled the law, he performed the, the works of the law for us, and he even died for us. We understand that when he died and was buried, we were dead and we were buried with him. And at his, at his resurrection, 
we also in the spirit where we were revived with newness of life. For those of who can believe on that and receive that through the spirit of faith, as it says, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. What we're speaking about now in these times, it was already prophesied that these things would happen in these times that we're living in today. You know, matter of fact, let's grab that in Hosea. Right. I believe was that nine? No, no, no. It's lucky. What is it? Hosea 10. We're going to find this in. It's in Hosea. Is it Hosea 3? Something like that. Y'all bear with me one second. So like you. Let's just slide through this real quick. Hosea 1. Okay, yeah. This is it. So Hosea chapter 1. And it says, verse 10. Matter of fact, let's start at verse 9. It says, Then said the Most High, Yahweh, call his name lo -Ami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God, your power. Right? So we understand that the Lord did cast off his people. He no longer was acknowledging them. So they were in his sight as heathen, as Gentiles, workers of iniquity. Right? Because that's all the heathen are. They don't perform the laws that is a commandment. So they aren't regarded as sons. Only those who serve the Lord Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, even in spirit and in truth, are his sons. It says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, even here in Babylon the Great, aka America, is being outlawed and spoken down upon by calling yourself an Israelite, by acknowledging the name of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. We understand that. You know, in the same place where it was said unto them that ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So, yes, it was prophesied that we're going to return to the Lord, that we're going to acknowledge his ways, that we would even be received back into a covenant with him. Right. Then verse 11, Hosea 1 and 11, then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel, all 12 tribes be gathered together. And appoint themselves one head, the Lord Yahweh Shai, but even also uh, Malak Dawada, King David, you know, it says, uh, which was, you know, Masha, King Masha, uh, for those of y'all who can't receive it, man. It says, and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel, right? So we understand the Lord, it was prophesied, and this is just one example. It was prophesied even in the Old Testament, so to speak, that the Israelites would be received back. You know, this is not a new doctrine. This is not a new concept. You know, Romans 3 and 21. But now the righteousness of the Most High, Yahweh Shai, without the law is manifested. Because we're not going to be saved by the deeds of the law. We're going to be saved by the sacrifice in the Lord, Yahweh Shai, and through faith in that sacrifice. And even obedience to the Lord Yahweh Shah's commandments. What did he command us to do? To follow the laws of Moses. <laughs> and even he he made it more stricter. You know, he 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 uh he gave us more insight and wisdom in regards to the law, showing how much we are actually going to keep the law. You know, it says being witnessed, Romans 3 and 21 at the latter half, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, as it was prophesied of, we would do. Even the righteousness of Yahweh, which is by faith of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, unto all. Because we understand the Heavenly Father even uh, commanded Moses to prophesy and to tell us that the Lord Yahweh was going to raise up Yahweh Shai, and he is who we would hear of our own brethren. We understand the Lord Yahweh Shai was and is an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, you know. It says, even the righteousness of the Heavenly Father, which is by faith of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, unto all and upon all them that believe. So you have to believe. It starts with the understanding of these scriptures. It starts with the Racha Kodash, the Racha HaKodash, the Holy Spirit, coming and supping with you, removing that veil from upon your eyes by co converting you, you know, washing you, cleansing your mind, and giving you remembrance of the prophecy of the Lord Yahweh Shai. We understand that all of these scriptures detail the Lord Yahweh Shai. You know, uh, it says, uh, by faith of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, unto all and upon all them that believe, the elect. 
that chosen. For there is no difference, right? Because we understand all have sinned, right? Verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh by Shemuel and Shai. So truly, we all should be condemned by the law of Moses. Truly, we all would be condemned by the law of Moses, man. But it's through the Lord Yahweh Shai and his obedience to the Heavenly Father in which all those who believe, they are all going to be delivered, man. For there is no difference. They're all going to be justified. They're all going to be uh, sanctified. You know, they're all going to be um, uh, washed by the blood of the lamb, you know, and found pure, found clean, found even holy and righteous before the throne in the day of judgment. You know, the scriptures even say, who shall lay a charge to the elect? None, because they have all been justified, man. It says Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh by Shemuel Shah. You understand that if you've broken one law, if you transgressed one commandment, then you transgressed all of them. You are a sinner and worthy to be put to death. So those of y'all who seek to be justified by the works of the law, you have been condemned already by the word of Yahweh by Shemuel Shah. You know? So you so what are you doing? Yeah, you can try to kill a kill a goat, kill a lamb, you know, you know, make your own sacrifice, but the Lord is not gonna regard it. We understand the scripture said what? Um that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. The scriptures even also say that um the Lord is not delighting in our sacrifices, man. He's not gonna smell in your solemn assemblies, you know. So once again, all those who believe on the Lord Yahweh Shai. Even Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, understanding this 100% truth, they're going to be the ones delivered and found in the grace of the Lord. You know, continuing on, matter of fact, I'll read down to verse 27. It says, verse 24, being justified freely by his grace. We understand that the Holy Spirit, the, the understanding of the Lord Yahweh Shai is even a gift. And it was a gift that was freely given. It wasn't something that we did and what we earned of our own merit and wisdom and strength. Yeah, I did it. I did it. I saved myself. Man, no. The elect, they have been justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Hamashiach Yahushai. So it's because of what he did. Yeah, he did it. You know, not us. It says, whom the Most High Yahweh has set forth to be a propitiation. Propitiation. Right, we're going to get that word in the blue letter. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and get it now. All right. Romans chapter 3. And... Alright, this word propitiation. I'll go ahead and play it for y'all. Strong's G, 2435. Helastadion. Helastadion. Mm -hmm. Helastadion. Right. And as it says, what relating to an appeasing or expitiation, right? That word expitiation, it's another big word. So let's go ahead and get that definition for y'all. It says to atone for, to atone for guilt or sin, right? So it's basically, um, it's basically mercy from the Lord, but it's basically a way of atonement, a way of cleansing, a way of putting you in right standings with the Lord. Right. So relating to an appeasing an appeal. Right. When you appeal or when you appease, it is going into to to you, you know, um, for lack of better terms, you know, to simplify it, uh, sweetening up or softening to like, let's say this. Let's say if you're a child and, you know, uh, you you did something bad at school, and you know, when you get home, you're going to get what? Right. And let's say, you know, something that will appeal or please your parents as if you got home really quick, you did all your chores, you did everything that you know they would normally want you to do, you know. And when they got home, they were surprised. They're like, oh, wow. You know, I, I was angry with you, but I can't help. And look, you, you're doing things that you know would make me happy. You know, I'm not going to treat you as harshly as I would. You know, just as an example, that's what the word appeasing goes into, right? All right? Just so you says, uh, cons conciliate to satisfy that's kind of the word i was alluding to to satisfy right so it says relating to and appeasing or expitiating having 
placating or expiating force expi expiatory a means of appeasing or expi i'm tired of them using these same words right propitiation right they're gonna use the word in the example a sacrifice we understand that the propitiation that has been giving that has been given the appeal that has been given uh to the israelites by the lord is the sacrifice of the lord yahweh shai you know, that is the only thing that's going to please the Lord in regards to the nation of Israel's sins. And they're acknowledging of that sacrifice, man. That is the only way the Israelites will be received and found in mercy. As it says, mercy seat. The, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is that mercy seat, right? Hebrews 9 and 5. Uh, and over it, the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly, Right? Once again, and I probably should read the whole thing, but the point is the Lord Yahweh Shai was that mercy seat that was, you know, built and fashioned in that tabernacle. The Lord Yahweh Shai is the embodiment of that mercy seat. He is who that mercy seat represents it because it is through his sacrifice in which the Israelites will receive mercy from their sins. It says, once again, Romans 3 and 25, whom, right, whom, <laughs> it's like, you know, I don't know why I said it like that, whom, the Most High has set forth to be a propitiation, right? Through faith in his blood, telling you that this is about that sacrifice. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of the Most High. Through acknowledging the Lord, you know, the Lord is going to for forgive his people. It says, verse 26, Romans 3 and 26, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahweh Shai. So the Heavenly Father has set up the Lord Yahweh Shai to redeem, to save, to deliver the nation of Israel, starting with that elect, the 144,000, pursuant to the book of Revelation chapter 7, and that great multitude, that innumerable multitude that cannot be numbered, also of the nation of Israel, being men, women, and children who also believe and testify of this 100% truth, this gospel. The Lord said that well, they're going to be found in righteousness. They're going to be justified through the justifier, which is the Lord Yahweh Shai, and through the belief in Yahweh Shai. And let's read verse 27 so we understand where is boasting then? It is excluded, right? So, no, you're not going to be, be able to. Uh, boast in your works of the law. Oh, I kept the Sabbath day yesterday, you know, or or I partook in the Passover. You know, we understand that, yes, all these things are us rehearsing the righteous acts and they are beautiful things to be done. You know, however, that is not what's going to save us. It says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Because we understand that the Heavenly Father is only dealing with those who have faith. Yes, this truth is faith-based for you faithless Israelites out there. This true faith embodies our works, man. For those of y'all who can't receive it, this true faith embodies our works, which is the acknowledgement of the sacrifice of the Lord Yahweh Shai. He did the works for us, man. And these times, our works is professing this true faith. And you know, and, and maintaining it through to the end. We understand that it's the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, in which uh, we're going to be led and guided in these last days, even amongst these perilous times. You know, it's the Lord, Yahweh Shai. It's always been the Lord, Yahweh Shai, for those of y'all who can't receive it, man. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 and verse 15, and we're going to end on this note, you know. And, and don't get me wrong, once again, like I have said, we are to rehearse the righteous acts. As we read earlier, those of y'all who are willfully sinning and those of y'all who are even still sinning, even not knowingly, are not going to inherit the kingdom of Yahweh Shai. You have to acknowledge your sins and repent and acknowledge the Lord Yahweh Shai. This is Wisdom of Solomon 4, and we're just going to read verse 15. It says, This the people saw and understood it not. Neither laid they up this in their minds, that his grace and mercy is with his saints and he hath res and that he hath respect unto his chosen once again being the israelites and even being the elect of the nation of israel his grace and his mercy is with us man 
So once again, what is the point of having grace and mercy if you can keep the whole law? What's the point of having grace and mercy if you're going to be redeemed by your works? There's no point of it, you know, which shows you that the Lord is going to have grace and mercy unto his saints and to his chosen by the faith in which they had, by that testimony, you know, by standing firm within their faith and their works, man. Even their works being the prophesying, you know, uh, 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 of the, the Lord's judgments, you know, by the continuation of, of his will. By having this this faith, you know, professing the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and truly repenting, you know. So, but with that, we're not gonna drag this out any much longer. Lord willing, Abarazza, you were edified. You know, any Akiyam that may have dropped any comments on the comment board, you know, um, Abarazza, Lord willing, I can grab those scriptures and maybe, you know, land back and do another continuation of this lesson. But with that, Abarazza, Lord willing, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Abarazza, this is edifying unto you, sincere. Hopefully, let. Till next time, shalom. Call Halayon La Abanawa Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawashai, Bahasham Rachaha Kodash, Wa Ababa Ball, Death to America.